I'm going to begin our service this morning with our opening song, which is Rise Up, O Flame, our lovely choir rendition that was done for our solstice celebration. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, bring to us beauty, vision, and joy. Westwood service, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where our building and many of us gathered here today has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous culture, history, and spirituality, and continues to do so. Amiskwichiwaskagin, the Cree name for Edmonton, meaning Beaver Hills House, is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional gathering place and home to diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. I acknowledge my role as a treaty person and I feel continuously called to explore what that means and how to be a responsible and respectful ally. I encourage each of you to seek understanding on how to be curious and respectful allies and treaty people. Welcome to this morning, this day, and this opportunity together to be in community. My name is Alara Stefaniuk Gadet. My pronouns are they and them, and I'm your service leader this morning. I also have the great privilege and joy of being Westwood's Director of Religious Education. Our speaker this morning is a new friend of mine that I met through a workshop that Pyros was facilitating, and I'm very, very happy to have met him. Emmett Michael describes himself as introspective and enthralling with equal parts grit and grace. Emmett's a musician who is built on his trials. Turning to music in his darkest times, he found solace in his ability to share his heart with others through his lyrics. Drawing on his experience of transitioning from female to male, living with mental illness and battling addiction, his songs carry a tone of desperation and sorrow. With soulful melodies and heart-wrenching lyrics, his music conveys a message that is both powerful and vulnerable, entirely unique yet familiar. Emmett is offering us his story and his music this morning, so I invite you all to sit back and be inspired by both. Bill Lee and I are your tech wizards. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we come together each week to learn more about what it means to be human. We're not here because we've figured out life's questions or because we think we've got it right. We come here to learn more about being in relationship together, how to listen, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, 
and how to create trust and compassion in one another as we celebrate our differences together. And on a few extra magical Sundays through the year, we also come to play together. Thank you for showing up from wherever you may be this morning. You are welcome here. Our chalice lighting this morning is an untitled poem by Becca Lee. It isn't always graceful, this learning to love, this healing, this looking in the mirror and smiling. We light our chalices this morning in a warm embrace of all the messy parts of ourselves that compassionately, compassionately fertilize new growth in our lives. The lighting of candles of concern and celebration is a cherished tradition in many Unitarian Universalist congregations. In seeing or listening to what is happening in each other's lives, it allows us to understand each other's worlds a little better, enabling us to share the joys and offer comfort to those with concerns. It helps us to be a true community. You may now type your candles into the chat as Emmett plays us one of his original pieces, Surrender. Love's the only thing that opens fire Despite the white flag you hold High above your head Bombs about to drop, so we repent, make our amends, and wish we'd done this whole thing different. As if fate could be diminished, as if God's good will is flawed, as if you didn't really mean it when you said that I was wrong and I'd have lost my mind just for the sake of you. Trauma's like a drug, it hits you once, then lingers under everything and everyone you think you love. I ask what's on her mind, she says not much, just think I might believe in God, I laugh out loud. But I'm afraid I think I might believe in us. And I could lose my mind just for the sake of I light one final candle for all of the unspoken joys and concerns that we carry in our hearts. Now, please join me for our affirmation that is on your screen. May the light of these candles 
inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. One definition of giving is to freely set aside for a purpose. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we are privileged to pay our own way. Our members and friends freely set aside money for Westwood so we may accomplish the things we dream of and do to live out our shared values. In these difficult times, our work of connecting and creating compassionate community is more important than ever. Ways to donate are on your screen. If this is your first time with us or you consider yourself a newcomer or you're unable, please consider your presence in our community, the gift you give, and feel free to attend any of our events or programming without financial obligation. If you are able to donate and you consider the time and work we do together valuable, please donate generously or consider donating on a monthly basis. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. I now pass the mic literally and figuratively over to Emmett for his sharing portion committed to love. Hi everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you all. Um, obviously I don't get a lot of time to be able to hang out with new folks and so it's really nice to be in a community um, as loving and accepting and wonderful as this one. Um, and being able to share a little bit about me and my story and my songs. Um, when I first heard that the theme was commitment, I was struggling to kind of think of, of things that I could talk about that relate would relate to that topic. And then in really diving in, I realized that there are a ton of things uh, that, that I can relate to in terms of commitment um, within my own life. And uh, for me, what was highlighted is a commitment to love and what that looks like is not only a commitment to loving others but a commitment to loving ourselves because it's my belief that that's something that we have to actively do on a daily basis in order to continue to do so at least that's the case for me um it's been a really and i'll share a little bit of my own personal story and what led up to that realization for me um <clears throat> oh sorry excuse me i've got that morning voice going on um Commitment to anything has always been really difficult for me. I'm afraid to apply myself to something and to ultimately fail. I'm afraid to commit to relationships only to end up getting hurt. I couldn't commit to loving myself or to healing myself because I didn't feel that it was worth it or that I was worth it. Um, so I grew up in a very uh, religious Christian home and I realized at a very young age that there was something different about me and um, so I was born female and I transitioned to male. Um, and I, I knew from the time that I was a kid that I, that I guess the easiest way for me to explain it was I just felt like I, I was a boy. Um, I was like, I dreamt that I was a guy and I didn't have the language to be able to explain it. So I didn't know that I was transgender. I just grew up feeling my whole life that I was crazy or that there was something wrong with me. And, um, it took a lot of work and a lot of healing in order for that to shift. But in my teenage years, I started to develop feelings for a female friend of mine. And I was like, really just overwhelmed at the thought of like, this is something that I have to face that I have to deal with, because if I continue to suppress it, I'm only going to hurt myself. And so I had to make a commitment to myself um, to be able to get to a place of healing. And that took many, many years. In my young years, I, um, I went from going to a very um, small Christian school my whole life um, to then transitioning into a public school where everyone was very um, open and there was a lot of diversity. And while that was very comforting, it was also very overwhelming um, because then it meant that I had to really look at myself and to, 
to deal with what was going on. And I was also going into a space where I didn't know anybody. I had grown up around the same people my whole life. And so I was very socially awkward. At this point, I had been diagnosed already with depression and anxiety. Um, and so I was, I was really struggling with all of those things. And um, that only gets worse when you feel disconnected to other people. And um, <clears throat> so for a long, long time, I relied on drugs and alcohol for many years to suppress those feelings and to try and find community with people. I realized that it was really easy to make friends if that was the path that I took, even though those relationships weren't necessarily um, meaningful or real. Um, and I later ended up hospitalized for an overdose. I went to rehab. Um, and that was when I really started to um, look at what does faith and spirituality really look like for me? Um, and really finding something that um, I knew, finding an idea of a higher power that I knew loved and accepted me as I was. And that was um, a commitment that I had to make and I still have to make on a regular basis to be able to say that that's a journey that I'm going to going to take because there's obviously a lot of um, trauma and grief that I had to go through around um, religion. And uh, that's something that uh, I still have to actively work at, um, at finding reprieve from those things. Um, and as I said, so there's been sort of two, two sides to this for me is the, the concept of being committed to loving others and um, being committed to loving myself. And because I've struggled so hard for so many years to be able to love myself, it's been hard for me to, to be willing to put myself out there in a way where I could be vulnerable to getting hurt or have the fear that I won't be loved and accepted. And there are many examples in my life where um, I, have, I have found that love and acceptance and my relationship to my fiance, Alex, is just one example of that. And so I wanted to share a song that I wrote called I Might Let You Love Me. And it's about um, the being committed to the idea of allowing someone else to love you. When my heart feels heavy and my eyes are fighting sleep, help me find my rhythm right here in your heartbeat. I think I found my calling after losing everything. I can't say what I mean unless I've got the chance to sing. I hope you will forgive me when I cannot say a thing. Hallelujah, I'm always on the verge of tears. I think that I found love after chasing it for years. Hallelujah, I think I finally got it right. The song I've always known but couldn't ever seem to write. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I might let you love me, love me till the day I die. I might let you love me, and I might love you my whole life. to walk a mile in someone else's shoes but I am still myself I didn't even get to choose summer will be over before you can say goodbye and I might let you love me as long as you still want to try 
time I let you love me, love me till the day I die. Hallelujah, I'm always on the verge of tears. I think that I found love after chasing it for years. Hallelujah, I think I finally got it right. The song I've always known but couldn't ever seem to write. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I might let you love me, love me till the day I die, and I might let you love me, and I might love you my whole life. Futures on my mind. Love could be forever if the past don't rob you blind. Early in November, you came into my life, gentle like a whisper with a love as fierce as kind. Love could be forever if the past don't rob us blind. A love will be forever. I can see it in your eyes. Um. And so in the process of um, learning to be loved by others, that in turn really helped me to be able to love myself. And uh, that wasn't always easy um, because a lot of the things I talked about, I was still really struggling for many years with my addiction and with not feeling um, totally accepted by my community. And when I, I first came out as transgender, a lot of my family, um, they really, really struggled with that. And so I, um, later on though, um, my mom came into my room and I just remember her saying, I've, I've done all of this research and um, I support you after a couple of years of it being really, really difficult. And um, that really helped me to start on this journey of self-acceptance and the commitment to loving myself and the commitment to my own healing from, from addiction and um, in and through mental health. Um, and so I wrote this song, uh, called God shaped hole. And it's all about that experience coming out as transgender in a church community and how difficult that was. Um, and I really had to wrestle. I'm really grateful that I, um, that I am transgender and I, I wouldn't go back and change it. Cause it's really forced me to, um, look at my faith in a way that maybe other people who came from a Christian background might not have and to really discover um, what was important to me and, and what I believe um, my higher power really um, stands for and that I am loved and accepted. Uh, I know that there are a lot of other LGBTQ folks um, from in these church spaces that struggle with this. So I really wanted to include um, other people in this project and in this song. And so I wrote a song all about this experience and I just released it a couple of days ago and um, several LGBTQ folks from around North America participated in the video, each sharing something that was um, an aspect of their identity, something close to their heart, um, a, a word of encouragement that they've held on to, or something difficult that um, they've had to face. And uh, they all shared it in this music video that I made. And uh, Alara was included in that. And I'm really, really excited for you to see this video. We decided uh, that we, we really wanted to share this with you. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to share it. Uh, thank you again so much for having me and for listening to a little bit of my story. 
um, and my songs. I really hope that you uh, enjoy this video. So long, farewell, goodbye I've got a war still left to fight Tooth and nail, I for an eye Flow's revenge, you've got it right And there's been far too little grace From people claiming to be saved All God's children spewing hate Digging graves and saving face I used to always pray I would awake the next day Still feeling like my body's left my soul betrayed God don't make mistakes it's no mistake that I was made And you don't know, what well, you don't know All our hearts a God-shaped hole I'm so far from perfect Still don't admit my own and my doubts, my greatest defect All my fear is crippling I wish I wasn't always quiet When I needed to speak up I wish my words were always gentle When I spoke about love Shame still arms aloud like a ghost underground Why am I most lonely when I'm standing in a crowd Of people of the faith I hope someday that could change Cause you don't know what well, you don't know all our hearts have got shaped whole been wonky i'm not sure why the slides are being strange but anyways we have one final closing song the lyrics are on your screen if you would like to sing along it's a real catchy tune i hand hand picked it off of emmett's album for our closing song so we can sing along muted of course <laughs> i mean <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah i feel like this song is a really good fit because it's 
it's all about that commitment to love and the commitment to being vulnerable enough to let others love you. Um, it's something that I've always really wrestled with, but in allowing myself to be vulnerable, to love and be loved, I've experienced what real love truly is. And so uh, this song is about that experience. The verses are very wordy, but the choruses I feel are um, pretty easy to sing along with. And uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy. <laughs> I think I wanna be a man. 
Thank you so much for all of your sharing this morning, Emmett. We all really appreciate your story and your music. Our closing words and chalice extinguishing this morning are from Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not become weary or grow discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. So this morning, we extinguish our chalices in the spirit of faith that our good work and intentions will bear fruitful impact in our communities, in the world, and within our own hearts and minds. So thank you all for joining us this morning. Next week is Reverend Ann Barker, Ann coming for a service called Designing the Future, which I know is inspired by this book by Gemma Stone that I haven't read, but I trust that it'll be a good service.